Prince and a Robin crown. Hey, and if you make a little work on your soul salvation, do it without delay. Come on. He's coming back one day. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we come before you for our routine Bible study. I enjoy coming before you. I'm Terry Atwater, Minister Emeritus of the North Shore Church of Christ at 326 Julian Street in the great city of Waukegan, Illinois. We're right up here on the lakefront, Lake Michigan. <clears throat> you have to come and visit us sometime. You're welcome, people loving to serve people. Come and be with us. Uh, you'll find that our <clears throat> on Sundays, our 9 o'clock devotion will be quite inspirational to you as we'll pray on your behalf and you'll be able to get ready for the class that follows at 9.30 and the class is for all ages, from the nursery class all the way up to the senior mature adult class, where you'll be able to ask questions and, and uh, get information that you desire for your own personal need. And then following that class at 1045 is our worship service, uh, which begins <coughs> at, uh, at, that, at that hour, 1045, and you'll certainly be edified as we together uh, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, John 4, verse 24, where it says, God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And of course, our worship <coughs> follows the pattern of the New Testament. Obviously, if you want to know anything about the church, you have to go to the New Testament. The Old Testament does, has no information relative to the church. It has a t types of the church. The temple was a type of of the church, but it was not the church. See, the church, Jesus shed his blood for the church. He purchased it with his blood on the cross. And so to get how the church operated, you need to go and read your Bible from, uh, from starting with about book, uh, the book of Acts to Revelation, and you'll get a good synopsis of how the Lord wants his church uh, to function. And of course, one thing they do, for instance, you have doctrine, all right, that's the, that's the teachings of Jesus. You have fellowship. That's where you, you, you connect with other human beings that have intellect. Uh, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and then breaking bread. That's the communion service. We have a communion uh, every Lord's Day to celebrate his resurrection. And, and they, not only do we, we have the communion, but we have prayer. As we always, as Paul said, pray without ceasing. And, of course, you have a chance uh, to give to the ministries of the church, as the Lord has commanded when he said in Acts 20 and 35, it is more blessed to give uh, than to receive. So that, that, that gives you a synopsis uh, uh, of our worship service, along with great singing. Uh, you notice know what I said, just singing. The Bible says we are to uh, speak to ourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in the, our hearts to the Lord. Or as the Hebrew writer said, in the midst of the church, I will sing, Hebrews 2.12. <clears throat> so sing means to sing. That's, that's exactly what we do. See, you cannot do what the Lord did not ask you to do. You only do what the Lord wants done in his body. It's just like in your body. You do what you want to do with your body. And the Lord does what he wants to do with his body. His body is the church. Now, so you come and be with us on Sunday, you'll be able to participate in all of that. Then, of course, on Wednesdays, we have uh, two Bible classes, live Bible classes for all ages, 930 in the morning, taught by Brother Ronald Roberts, great uh, seasoned uh, teacher. Come out and uh, be with him in that class. <clears throat> then we have the 630 p.m. that is taught by our uh, dearly beloved uh, minister, uh, Brother Griffin, right now we're dealing with church doctrine. This is something that we really need na now in 2024 because you have many people that are making up stuff and uh, you have fake news, lying, etc. that is unscriptural. And we certainly need to understand what church doctrine is from uh, the, the Biblos itself. And, and of course, here at North Shore, we have many other ministries benevolent ministry, educational ministry, evangelism ministry. We have funeral ministries. We have ministries, our youth ministry, our seniors ministry. We have all kinds of ministries. We have the, uh, the uh, bulletin ministry. We have the, uh, 
visit, visitation ministry. So ministry is galore in order to fully uh, make you a well-rounded person uh, in the kingdom of the Lord. Now, let us proceed in this class <coughs> uh, as we have been. This is a 12 lesson series and we're at lesson number 11. <coughs> By the way, if you'd like to get some of the earlier lessons, what you might do is email or call in. You can call us at 847-623-9727 or you can email us and we'll see what we can do about getting you some of the earlier lessons, lessons 1 through 12. And all of these lessons deal with a central theme. The theme is when life seemingly is a curse, where is the blessing? You know, it seems like when life is a curse, things are going on that's uh, not to your liking. Uh, you, you're trying to find the blessing uh, in, in living. Uh, and, of course, all of these lessons have come really from the book of Psalms, <coughs> a great devotional book. Well, I think they've been helpful uh, to many, many people who have who have checked in with us. Now, lesson number 11 is a very important lesson. And in this lesson, in lesson 11, <coughs> there is a word that you hear quite frequently as you walk to and fro, as you're on your job, or as you, uh, you might be uh, just uh, in the airport, or wherever you might be, or in the school, or whatever. Somebody will we'll use the word stress. Stress. I'm stressed today. I'm stressed. <coughs> Let me share this with you. Stress can do one of two things for you. Stress can make you perform at your best, or stress can make you degrade into a mess. Okay? <coughs> stress will go either way. Stress can make you uh, be an A student, or stress can cause you to be an F student. So it, it, it's, it's all a matter of understanding the subject of stress. So our lesson is when stresses are larger than our strengths. <coughs> we all have... Now, let's, let, 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 me, let me allow me to say this. Every human being walking on the face of the earth has a level of stress. You're born into stress. You will deal with stress all of your life. Even when you're on the beach uh, in a, uh, sleeping in a hammock or drinking lemonade, there's stress. Uh, even when you're on your job, there's stress. So you, you cannot avoid stress. Now, some people try to avoid it by getting drunk, getting high, <coughs> taking an uh, overdose of medication. Uh, some try to some, uh, overeat. They do a lot of things to try to damper the impact of stress. First of all, before you start doing irrational things, let's get a better understanding of stress. Now, being that I am a... I'm not a psychiatrist. <coughs> I'm not in, 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 in that particular field. Uh, I am a theologian. I'm a biblical. I'm, I'm just a, a minister. Uh, the Bible is, is the book. The Bible will be here when all of the psychiatrists are dead. The Bible will be here. Jesus said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So the psalmist in the book of Psalms, chapter 46. And we'll be dealing with this subject today in the 46th division of Psalms, chapter 46. Only has 11 verses, but they're powerful verses as they deal with uh, us trying to get us as human beings to be in the presence of God <coughs> when we have calamities. Because everybody's going to have a calamity. Okay, you're going to have a calamity. You're going you're gonna to have... Good times, you're going to have bad times. And, and, uh, you, you, and in order, the, the key to all of that is what is your relationship with the Godhead? 
the God, you know, the Godhead just plays a major role, but we just, we just, you, you know, the, the, the attendance in church right now across the board in the United States is down. Since COVID, uh, fewer of our young people go to church. They don't see the need. It is because of, you know, a lot of it is because of their upbringing in the home. It was not emphasized or whatever the reason might be. Uh, they think they can get it maybe uh, doing other things, you know, joining a gang or joining a fraternity, a sorority. Uh, they think they might be able to uh, uh, get some kind of uh, uh, high-level experience in some type of club or just, you know, just like I said, uh, getting high on something that is, uh, you know, other than, uh, you know, uh, cereal and toast. Uh, <clears throat> so let us... Uh, Take a moment uh, and talk about stress. Uh, now, there are stresses. Listen to me, class. Now, I want you to get your pencil and your paper, as I always say. Take down some notes. There's no need coming to Atwater's class without a pencil and a paper if you want to really want to get the benefit of it. Uh, you, you, need, you need to do that. <coughs> stresses, there are some stresses that lead to headaches. Uh, you ever had a headache? You know, what you, what you call a stress headache? Uh, and that, and that comes because of either maybe you got bad vision. See, sometimes people, people stress themselves. They have bad, they know they have bad vision, but they won't put their glasses on, you know, because they, they want to look good. They don't like glasses, okay? If you got to wear glasses, put those, put those glasses on, Okay. I tell you what, it's better to put the glasses on than to have your eye be blind. So put your glasses on. <clears throat> so bad vision can cause stress. Uh, dull lighting, if the lighting is not adequate, th that that can that can be that can be a cause of uh, stress in your life. Okay. Uh, nowadays we have what is called LED lighting, uh, light emitting diode, LED lighting. Uh, which is a brighter light. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, dull lighting can, you're trying to read or do something that is tiny and it's hard to see, you know, that, that can cause a headache. Uh, how about smog? Smog from our automobile exhaust pipes, you know, in certain, some cities have more smog than others. Some rural areas have smog or when the farmer's spraying his crop or what have you. Maybe smog. Smog can cause a headache. Uh, how about tobacco smoke? <clears throat> Sitting in your car smoking and, and uh, somebody smoking in your car or in a close area, closed area, uh, that, that can cause a headache. Definitely can cause a headache for somebody who doesn't smoke and you're around somebody who is smoking. That, that can cause a headache. It can cause a headache for the smoker and cause a headache for, for the non-smoker. Uh, how, how about just plain old, I'm going to give you another one, just plain old emotional upset. When you get upset emotionally, that, 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 can cause, that, that can cause a headache, okay? Just getting upset. And you know, many times we get upset over minor things, things that are of no significance. Now, let me show you what happens in your physical body, in your physical body, okay? See, sometimes we need to uh, get to know our bodies, uh, the problem is a lot of times we take health and still don't know our bodies. Uh, let, let me show you what happens. When you have, there is a level or a degree of stress in every human being that will initiate some action inside the body, okay? There's a level <coughs> of stress that will initiate interior action in everybody's body, all right? There's five actions that take place. Let me give you one action. Number one, when, when that level of stress is reached, the body starts producing adrenaline, okay? The body produces adrenaline. And you, you know, when you're frightened, the body, the body produces adrenaline. When, you, uh, when, you, when you're excited, the body produces adrenaline. So when you get to some level of stress, no matter what the cause is, it makes no difference whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. When you get to some level of stress, your body produces adrenaline, okay? That's, that, that's point number one. Point number two, uh, when that happens, 
more blood circulates to the brain. Okay? So, so that's, that's number two. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, why would more blood? Well, the body is saying, okay, we've got to activate the brain so we can deal with this stress. So, so more blood flows to the brain. That's number two. All right? Number three, what happens is the brain, because you've got more blood flowing into the brain than normal, the, the brain begins to swell inside of the skull. Okay? So that's, that's number three. Okay? So I'm just showing you the physiology of this. Number four, when, 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 when the brain swells against the skull, pressure builds up. Naturally, when the brain presses against the skull, abnormally, you got a pressure build up. And then, of course, number five, a headache results. That's why your head hurts, okay? That, 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 that's three. So you, you see those five steps? How that, that, le that leads to the headache, okay? Now, <clears throat> stress generates uh, two kinds of, I would say, headache situations. There is the literal headache where you, you, you feel like your head is pounding, literal headache. And then there is the metaphorical headache, uh, the metaphorical headache where it's, it's not a real headache, but it, it, it's, it's kind of like when you you, 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 you had, you know, your, your back is against the wall and you just can't move. You know, you, you can't think, you know, what, what we call a metaphorical headache. All right, now, let, let, let's, uh, let, let's step a little further and talk about the impact of stress, the impact of stress. And in, in just a moment, we'll, we'll get into the text, but I'm trying to give you the, the intro so you understand. See, see, sometimes you need to understand context before you deal with a text. See, a lot of times what happens is we jump into a text, and, 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 but we don't get the context. All right. Uh, some stress is unavoidable. Write that down. You're going to always have some stress, and it's unavoidable. It, it, it's just, it's just going to happen. When you wake up in the morning, you think you're all rested and so forth, you're going to have some stress, okay? But it's, uh, it, it, it's, just, uh, it's just unavoidable. Some, now watch this now. Some stress is necessary in us human beings uh, in order for us to function adequately. In other words, you, you wouldn't even function adequately if you didn't have some stress. So that, what, what, what am I saying? Some stress is good for you. And then some stress is bad for you, okay? But if you, if you had zero stress, see, a lot of times people, they want to take all these aspirins and, you know, and, and, and add veals and all this kind of stuff, trying to get rid of the stress. You know, you, you, you don't want zero stress. Some stress, some stress helps you as a human being to function routinely and adequately, okay? Let me give you an example. Stress. You know, you know why you study in school? Because of stress. Stress makes you study. If you had zero stress, you have no, no pressure on you to motivate you to study. Stress makes you study. Let, let, me, let me give you another example. Stress makes a soldier fight. See, makes a soldier, you know, fight. You know, he's out there and people shooting bullets at him. It makes a soldier, because of the stress, it makes him step to another level and fight. Stress makes an athlete perform. <clears throat> you, 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 you know, you see athletes that are performing at top notch. They have stress. The stress makes that happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, stress makes preachers preach. Stress makes teachers teach. Stress makes parents parents. Goodness gracious. You, you wouldn't put up with those little kids running around all the time in your life and, and just, just disturbing you. You never get any peace. You know, I, I need some. Stress makes you parent your children, okay? Now, overwhelmingly, <clears throat> what happens to us is we generate more stress than we can handle. That typically happens, that we generate more stress than we can handle. And actually, we, we cause it. 
<laughs> we, 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 call, we cause that to happen. Uh, there is a, a level of what we call excessive stress. <coughs> some, some gentlemen did some analysis and some study, and they came up with the idea of what we call life change units. Uh, stresses that just kind of change your life. It just makes you function at a different level. Uh, see, uh, actually, it's stress makes a criminal do make, makes a criminal do a crime. Okay, so so th when you have life changing units, and, and the level they came up with was two hundred life changing units. What that does is those th 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 when you get to that level, that's what we call excessive stress. In other words, at the two hundred level of, <coughs> of life changing situations within your body and within your circumstance and all of that, that, that is what we call excessive stress. Now, let me, let me give an example of, of, of how, this, so, you, so you got some idea of what can cause that 200. L let me show you something that's 100. If a spouse dies, that out of, of itself just generates 100 life-changing units, just a, the death of a spouse, right off the bat. You got a hundred life-changing uh, uh, units. Let's let's talk about a divorce. Just a divorce generates seventy-three life-changing units. Just a, just a divorce. Even though you might win the divorce, you're gonna have stress. I don't care who wins or lose or, or draw or whatever in a divorce. There's going you 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 you're generating life-changing stress units. Okay, seventy-three of them. Let, let, let me give you another one. Let me give you another. One. Do you know just Christmas time? Christmas time generates 12 life changing units. Just, just Christmas. The word Christmas, because first of all, you know what's coming to mind? Shopping, food, visiting, gifts, money, shortage, and all those kind of things that come into play. 12 life changing units. All right? Now, so, so, so that gives you some of the impacts of stress. Now let's talk about when trouble comes, when trouble comes. Now, in Psalms 46, uh, we'll find that the psalmist, the psalmist here in Psalms 46, uh, what, was not even aware of what we call life-changing units, that scale, uh, to help. And the psalmist, but the psalmist had many shattering experiences, okay? And, and, and when I say, if, if you look at this thing, let, let's look at uh, Psalms 46, look at verses 2 and 3, okay? Psalms chapter 46, verses 2 and 3. I'm going to start at verse 2. I don't want to start at verse 1. I want verse 2. All right, now verse 2 says this. Watch this now. Therefore will not we fear. See, when stress comes, it sets up even a certain amount of fear in us. Therefore will not, will not we fear? Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. That's like an earthquake. Okay. In verse 3, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, that's like a waterfall, troubled waters, or like, like that hurricane that's coming in down there in Florida right now. Can you imagine, class, the stress that the people of Florida are going through? And, and we have a former president that's got the nerve, the sick, ignorant, irrational, stupid nerve to make up stuff that's not true and cause people to function incorrectly. So not only is the hurricane causing life-changing units to an excessively high level, you got a former president of this country creating problems for the people that he ought to be helping, loving, and serving appropriately. Even though he's not President, he has no authority whatsoever, but he's running his mouth. Why doesn't he be like Bush? Bush is quiet down in Texas. Clinton is quiet. Obama is quiet unless asked to speak. 
Why doesn't he just shut up instead of creating stress in people? The hurricane is going to be on. In fact, this, this hurricane already is up at 180 miles. That, that, that's well above a, 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 a level five hurricane. 180 miles on. That's going to be some damage. It, it may just wipe everything off in central Florida. You know, it, it's, it's a possi possibility. All right? So there, 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 some of the shattering experiences of the psalmist uh, is, is like a roaring flood. Okay, when when water when water is coming through and nothing you can do but try to get out of the way, and many times if you wait too long, you won't get out of the way. In fact, they're telling people in Florida right now, you need to leave right now. Do you know some people say, "Well, I'll just wait until tomorrow." You better get in your car or get on your bicycle or whatever you got and get out of Dodge right now. You cannot outrun a hundred and eighty mile an hour wind that's pushing water that's 15 to 20 foot high. You cannot, I don't care if you are Hussein Boat, you cannot outrun that, okay? So the psalmist had some shattering experiences. A uh, roaring flood, uh, moving rocks like an earthquake. His life seemed like an earthquake. Or like Hurricane Helene that went through in Florida before, okay. We need to, there's three things we need to do. <clears throat> and that is, ladies and gentlemen, we need to prepare for three things uh, in, in, in our life. We, we need to understand the importance of preparation. Number one, we need to prepare for death. Okay. Because everybody's going to die. You know, you know, you know you're going to die, right? Everybody I'm talking to is going to die. So you need to prepare for it. All right? Also, number two, you need to prepare for illness. You will get sick. Might as well prepare for it. That's why, that's why you get insurance. And as a matter of fact, if you're a middle-aged person, say between 40 and 60, you, you should be getting long-term care insurance. Okay? Because you're going to get sick. Illness. Don't be foolish. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm in, you know, I, I'm not going to get say, I'm gonna get, come on, don't be a fool. All right? And then number three, the third thing you need to prepare for is your finance. You know, we do a lot of foolish spending <clears throat> when we ought to be, when we got plenty. When, here's, here's what I don't understand. When we have plenty, we act stupid. When we have nothing, then all of a sudden we start talking about I'm going to save. Now, what kind of sense does that make? Okay. When you have, you need to plan on how to make the ha what you have sustain itself. Plan for that. Learn that from Joseph in the Bible. Joseph, when he had plenty, he didn't waste it. He stored it up. He stored it up for not only himself, but for the whole nation of Egypt. Jo Joseph was really a slave in Egypt, but he protected Egypt where he lived. And you know what? One person can be a blessing to a whole nation. Y'all got that? Well, 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 watch this here. President Biden got the cost of, 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 of uh, <clears throat> medication for diabetes down to $35. That's a blessing to the whole nation. I didn't, not, Trump didn't do that. That was Biden and Harris. That's that alone. Just that alone, you ought to vote for Harris for $35. Lord have mercy. I don't mean to get political on you, but I'm, I'm just saying that. That's, that. See, what happens, stress comes from our normal, routine, secular lives. And even when you're in the presence of the Lord in his sanctuary, when you're worshiping, when you're praying, there is stress. Stress is always present. Jesus had stress. 
when he was on the cross, when he was headed to the cross, Jesus said, Father, let this cup pass from me. That was stress telling him to do that. Okay? Stress is it. So you need to prepare for your stress. All right? Uh, you, you, you need to even, let me, let, me, let, me, let me share something else you need to pre prepare for. Okay? Within your, own, within your own family circle, you need to prepare for your in-laws. You know, it's amazing the trouble that in-laws can cause. In-laws can become outlaws. Lord have mercy. All right? Now, let's, let, let's start working on the solution set. How do we uh, handle stress when it's larger than our strengths? All right? Let me give you the first step in doing that. And, and, and I want you to understand something. The first step is not in the beginning of the chapter. See, just because you, you know, because you expect it to be, that's not where it is. The first step actually is in verse 10. Now drop down to verse 10 right quick. Psalms 46 and verse 10. What's the first thing the psalmist says? When stress is working on you, be still. Lord have mercy. The Godhead wants us to react opposite of what our normal instinct is. Okay? See, when our normal instinct, let, 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 let me show you something here. I, I think I'll, I'll just kind of write this. I'm going to write this right over here. All right. The first thing the psalmist wants us to do and the, and the Godhead wants us to do is be still. That's in verse 10, okay? Now, what, when, 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 a, when a stress comes your way, now, now the stress could be, a, a, let, let's say uh, somebody shoots a gun, boom. Uh, uh, let's say a snake crawls, in, uh, crawls into your bed, okay? Uh, let, 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 let's say uh, you got some bad tasting food at a restaurant. Uh, let, 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 let's say that somebody passes you and cuts right in front of you, okay? Now, is it your instinct normally to just, in those situations, just to be still? No. What's the normal instinct? I'm going to give you one word. The normal instinct is, and, and you can work with this any kind of way you want to, but the normal instinct is to run. See, our normal instinct is to run. You see a snake, you run. Now, in effect, if you jump, that's the effect of you getting ready to run, Okay. Or if, if, if somebody uh, stresses you by calling you out of your name, the first thing is that you, you, you want to cuss them out or whatever. That's the, that's the effect of running, okay? The first thing we want to do is run. But the, what, does the, what does the psalmist say? Be still. Learn to be still. But you know what? You can't do it by yourself. You, 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 some things... You cannot do by yourself. The psalmist wants us to be cool, calm, and collected. Let's, let's take the church environment. Somebody comes in and makes you mad. You know, they take over your job or they, they do something you don't like and all that. What does the psalmist say? Just be still. Be calm, cool. And collected. Don't, 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 don't start running. You know, I quit. Run. You know, chickens run. Be calm. Cool. Take a chill pill. Be still. But you know, but you know, when you ah. Uh, it, 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 it's, yeah, let, let me say it like this. It's easy to be uh, cool, calm, and collected when you have no headache. Okay? <laughs> when you have no headache, when you have no stress headache, it's easy to be cool, calm, and collected. 
But we're not talking about that. We're talking about when you have stress. You may have a metaphorical headache or you might have a literal headache. Be still. Now watch this. To be still. Let me, let me, this, this is from the psalmist. To, to be still is difficult. Very difficult. Oh, you with me, class? L let me give you another example of something else that's very difficult. Jesus said, uh, love your enemy. That's very difficult. We, we, we were not geared, we're not geared that way. So the question is, if the psalmist is saying in verse 10, be still when it's not my makeup as a human being to be still. You know, you know, really we as human beings, we can't hardly even be still in a funeral. You know, we, we, we can't stand still, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Be still. L let me veer off for just a moment. You remember when the children of Israel were getting ready to cross the Red Sea and the Egyptians decided that they were going to, you know, Pharaoh and going to bring his soldiers and come back and recapture them and they, came, and they chased after them as they were leaving and, they, and they're down at the Red Sea. What did the Lord tell Moses to tell the people? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See, what typically happens, we got to learn how to be still. Now, now, now hold, hold a minute now. You can't go to school, you can't go to the university and learn how to be still. Okay? You can't uh, go to vocational school and learn how to be still. You can't go to the library and check out a book on how to be still. <coughs> All right, then, 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 then how, how, how am I to be still? <clears throat> let, 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 me get, let, let me throw something else out. When a soldier uh, hears an uncertain sound, a soldier knows to freeze. But why does a soldier freeze? Because the soldier is trained in boot camp. To freeze until you get a grip on what's going on around you. Freeze. You don't get up. See, see, if you're in a foxhole and you hear an uncertain sound, you get up and start running. Oh, goodness. Great. They just blow you away. Okay? You got to learn as a soldier, you're trained to freeze. As, 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 as New Testament Christians in the church, we got to learn how to freeze, be still when there's a change that you don't like. Be still. But see, it's difficult. It's difficult. <coughs> All right? Then if it's difficult, how do I handle it? Well, let's go back to verse 10. It says, what does it say in verse 10? Be still and... All right, watch me now. And, 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 and is a coordinating conjunction connecting things of equal rate. Be still and know that I am God. All right, see, there's your answer. That's your answer. All right, Brother that one. Help, help me out, Brother that one. <coughs> How can I learn to be still when I got stressful situations going, my kids are running wild. It's maybe some of them are in jail or what have you. Uh, my, my spouse is not acting right. I'm, you know, the doctor told me I, I got something going on not with my health wise. Uh, you know, I'm flunking out of school or whatever. How can I learn to be still? I got to get to know the Godhead. All right? If you don't know the Godhead, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to run, and you're going to run yourself right into trouble. All right? Now, let's deal with that now. 
<clears throat> so the psalmist says, know that I am, that's what God is telling the psalmist, know that I am God. Okay? Now what I got to do, let's deal with the word no. Okay? The word no. See, we, we, we take this word lightly. Okay? The word no <laughs> is not knowing that God is God. What, what does it mean to know? Well, to know means that I imitate my relationship with the Godhead like a husband and wife relationship. It's an intimate relationship. It's not a casual relationship. The only way I can handle stress is I got to learn to be still, but I have to have an intimate relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The only way I can love an enemy who has done me wrong by my estimation is to have a relationship with God, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the only way it'll fly. You cannot handle your stress by taking your pills. You can't handle your stress by eating more. You can't handle your stress by drinking more Hennessy. You can't handle your stress by smoking cigarettes and weed. You can't handle your stress by exercise. Now, I'll tell you this. It makes you feel good. Some things make you feel good, but it doesn't solve the problem. See, the real problem with us as human beings is our re intimate relationship with the God. As a matter of fact, if we got our intimate relationship right, 99% of all our problems go away. Your sin, first of all, sin goes away. See, understand the underlying foundation of all stress is sin. See, there was no, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, there was no sin in the world, and there was no stress. But when sin came into the world, what did Adam and Eve do? First thing they did is they tried to cover up, and they started to cover up mode. So that, that stress caused them to do wrong, okay? Sin is the underlying reason of our stress problem. Now, didn't I say now, some stress is good and some stress is bad. But under it all is sin. Okay? Now, know that I am God. Okay? <clears throat> now, how do we need, how, now here's the question. Now, I guess, I, I, know, I know you're waiting on this one now, right? Okay, class. How do you get to know God intimately? How, 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 how does that work? Well, <laughs> let, let, let's see. Okay, now I think I'm ready for verse 1. How do you get to know God intimately? Number 1, look at verse 1. God is, I guess I better write this down. I better write this down. How do I get to know God intimately? Number 1, number 1, I got to know that God is my refuge. The Godhead is my refuge. See, when you see God there, that's the Godhead. That's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I got to know that God is my refuge. Okay? Secondly, number two, I got to know that God is my strength. See, your strength doesn't come because you lift weights. Your strength doesn't come because you can lift a 150-pound weight. Your strength doesn't come because you eat good food. God is your strength. Amen? We had one of our sisters that fell on Sunday. But she's still alive because God is her strength. Okay? Now, what's number three? Intimate relationship with God. <coughs> present. Present. Present help. 
In other words, God, the Godhead has 100% availability. Okay? Now, so what do I need to know about God? He's my refuge. He's my protector. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not my Glock. It's not my AR-15. It's, it's, it's not my dog. Uh-uh. No, no, no. God is my refuge. He is my strength. And God is my present help. When? In trouble. Lord have mercy. So verse 1 <laughs> tells us, how the role that God plays, when I use him, I can learn to be still. See, if, 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 if I got God who is my refuge and my strength and my help, then all I got to do is just be still because God's going to take care of it. See, a lot of times what happens is we want to run ahead of God and take care of it ourselves and just mess it all up. And then you come out with, instead of one headache, you got 55 headaches because you messed it all up, Okay. All right, now, to cap this off, these getting to know your Godhead, here's how I need to react to that. I, number one, I guess I better write these down. All right, so let me draw another arrow right here. Number one, I must accept the Bible as final authority. Accept the Bible as, as being right and final authority. If you don't accept the Bible as final authority, then the Godhead can't be your refuge. Okay? That's number one. And then after I accept the Bible, I must trust. All right, let me put this up here now. I must trust what I accept. Do you know a lot of times, you know, what happens to us? We accept certain things, but we don't trust it. Okay? <laughs> I, 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 I accept the food that you're giving to me, but I don't trust what you put in it. <laughs> I accept your gift, but I don't, I don't trust the spirit which you gave it. Okay. Now, let's go to the Bible. If you accept the Bible... You have, to, you have to trust what you accept. You got to trust it, okay? And then number three, <coughs> number three is I've got to relate. Relate my trust to God. <coughs> God is a spirit. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And lean not to thine own understanding. Okay? Y'all you, you, you begin to see the connection? Now, now here's a problem. All right? Now, now watch this, class. You, you need to write this down. I'm getting ready to give you now, class. You need, to, you need to write this down. Here is our problem. Now, I've given you the solution. But here's our problem in dealing with stress. We don't give the Lord opportunity to show what he can do in tough times. Okay? Now watch this. A person can get mad in church right now and they say, I won't be back next Sunday. I already said, I ain't coming back next Sunday. They have not prayed. They have not meditated. They have not worshipped. Have not read the Bible. They have not at least stood still for the rest of the service. They just get up, gone. So they did not give the Lord the opportunity to show what he can do in tough times. That's our problem. That is our problem. It's not the Lord's problem. It's not your enemy's problem. It's not your parents' problem. It's your problem. It's my problem and not somebody else's problem. We don't give the Lord the opportunity to show what he can do in tough times. Now, let, now let, let's deal with this. 
a very present help. How many of you class got friends, got friends? And <clears throat> when you need, no, so I said need, not want, but need something. They say, well, you know what, I'd like to, I would like to help you, but I just can't get involved. I just, I just can't get involved. Okay. Now, is that a friend? <laughs> I can't get, you know, and, 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 and many times the person that says I can't get involved could at least be a, be a moral support. They don't even want to be a moral support. Huh? I, I got I to gotta stay away from that. I got to stay away from that child, honey child. Okay. Many of our friends, so-called friends, when they see, for instance, my friends, when they see my trouble coming, they start leaving. Lord, have mercy. So what good are they? When my trouble is coming, they leave. All right? I can't be involved. Now let's bring the Lord to the table. What about the Lord? The Lord says in so many words, not so. When your trouble comes, I'll be there. When Abraham was about ready to kill Isaac, the Lord provided a ram in the bush. When Joseph, by his own brother's class, was Thrown in a pit, the Lord provided an Ishmaelite caravan. When Moses was in the desert running, the Lord picked him up and carried him to the land of Midian, got married, and after 40 years, the Lord showed him a burning bush. David was running from Saul, trying to kill him. Saul is king, and the Lord has removed him from his kingship, <clears throat> but he was still sitting on the throne, ready to kill David. But the Lord was there to protect David. In fact, David got so close to Saul that he cut a piece of his robe, and he used that later to show, hey, Saul, I, I got a piece of your robe. I could have killed you. But the Lord was there in David's stead. Paul on the road to Damascus, and the Lord was there to help him and knocked him off his horse. Stop that mess, boy. I got something else better for you. Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then he said, Lamai, 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 what look, God, God, why have you forsaken me? The Lord hadn't forsaken him. The Lord was there. He was there. How do you know he was there, Terry? Why do you know he was there? Because just a day or two later, when the stone was over his grave, he walked out of the grave just as was planned. Lord, how about Mary? Mary, Mary. She was impregnated. And Joseph was getting ready to put her away. But then the Lord was there to comfort Mary. She, he comforted Mary by telling Joseph, don't you mess with that lady. She has what she's supposed to have. All right. Now let's look at uh, Psalms 46 as we deal with this thing called stress. Look at verses 4 and 5 in Psalms 46. Verses 4 and 5. <coughs> All right. As a time moves, I, I want to I kind of wrap this class up. Notice in verse 4, he says, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Look at verse 5. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Watch this now. Watch this now. This, this is what you call metaphorical language, okay? The river is in the midst of the city, okay? Is a beautiful rendition 
<clears throat> possibly you've seen some paintings where you got a city and maybe there's a river or a stream coming right down the middle of the city. It looks so calm and sedate. In fact, and in fact, in fact that we got a, a picture from Brother Cruz similar to that. Uh, that, that that's, it, 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 it's a beautiful thing. The river here, the river here is a metaphor for the Godhead. The Godhead going right down the middle of the city. That's, that, that's, a, that's the Godhead. And, and, of course, the Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, 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 what, and, 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 and the river, being that it's the Godhead, is the help for those who are in need in times of trouble. In other words, in the midst of your city, which is yourself and your circumstance, God, the Godhead, is a stream in the middle of your life when you need help. The problem is we don't wait on him to provide the help. You got it, but you don't use it. It's kind of like having a complete set of tools, but you don't use them. You know, you, you take a hammer and try to beat something out, so just get your screwdriver and your, and, and your crescent wrench. You, take, you try to beat it out. Okay. He aids people under stress. <laughs> In other words, the Godhead provides stress relief. When you're surrounded by t trials, tests, and tribulation, you need to punch in the relief valve. See, on a hot water tank, there is a relief valve. When it's, when it's under pressure, uh, there's a relief valve that'll pop off and release the pressure. If you don't have that relief valve, it'll just blow up. It'll, it can, a, a hot water tank can blow up four or five houses, okay? There's enough pressure can build up and it'll blow up four or five houses, okay? It's, it's a bomb in your house. But there's a relief valve that relieves the pressure. See, that's what the Godhead does, class. It relieve, he relieves the pressure that surrounds us, the trauma. When there's trauma and when there's treachery, have you, have, have you noticed there's something about uh, uh, Kamala Harris? Right now, she's under all kind of Republican pressure. But she still maintains the same powerful demeanor. Cool, calm, intelligent, responding, and not getting out of kilter cussing anybody out. She doesn't use profanity. She uses real words, intelligent words. Just, just that character about her alone, uh, it, it, she, she, she deserves to sit in that Oval Office. Just, just that alone. She deserves to sit in that Oval Office, okay? Let, 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 let's look at Isaiah right quick. Turn to the book of Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah, uh, as, as we wrap up this lesson, then we're going to wrap it up. Isaiah chapter uh, 33. <coughs> that Isaiah is, is, and you can you can write this down, Isaiah 33 and verse 21. Isaiah 33 and verse 21. Just a parallel passage relative to the river in the middle of the city. Notice in verse 21 it says, But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of what? <clears throat> Broad rivers and streams. <coughs> See, the rivers and streams denotes peace and flow. <coughs> it denotes assistance. We, we go, water is special. Water can save you. Water can protect you. Water helps you sustain your health. Uh, water is a beautiful thing. All right. Wherein shall go no galley with oars. <coughs> We're not going to have anybody beating around in the water. Okay. No galley with oars. Neither shall a gallant sh ship pass thereby. This is just the calmness that the Lord has in the middle of our circuit. Isn't, isn't, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Okay, now, now. Let, 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 let's get ready to close out now. We need to learn how to relax <coughs> and respond. Relax and respond. Why? <coughs> because in verse 1 of, of, of Psalms 46, God is... The Godhead is our refuge. <clears throat> so we have no fear. In other words, what we do is we move 
Listen, class, very closely to this. We move our theology from meditation to application. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> you know, you know when, you, when you read your Bible, uh, you, you, you get theology, a study of God. Okay, theology. Okay, you got, a lot of us got, the, we, you know, we can quote our little scripture, thou shalt not steal. And we turn around and go right over to Walmart and steal something, you know. Uh, it says, uh, eye for eye, two for tooth. And we go over there, and Jesus said, but love your enemy. We go over and smack somebody upside the head. Okay. But now, now watch this now. When you relax and respond, be still, then you relax and respond. You're recognizing that God, the Godhead, is your refuge. So, so, so you have no fear. You have no, you, you're not afraid because God is your protector. You got, you got bills. You, you created all the bills and you can't pay them. <coughs> That's why you need to build your relationship with the Lord. And, and let the Lord help you work through your bills. Okay? In fact, the Lord may send you to somebody that can counsel you in your bills. Okay? See, what, what, what we typically have to do, we, we allow pride to get in the way. And pride destroys any humility. Okay, so move your theology from just meditation to application, all right? So, that, that means that you, you have a working theology, not a sedentary theology. So that means uh, you, 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 your belief, <coughs> you, your, your, your belief, you, 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 your belief is that you believe with action. Remember, the Bible says that faith without works is dead, okay? It's one thing to have faith, but you need some works with that thing, you know, to show that, show me your faith by your works, okay? Faith that not only talks, but also walks. See, we got a lot of people do a lot, whole lot of talking, a lot of talking. I can, do, I can do that, I can do that, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. Well, let me see you do it now. See, you need, you need a faith that not only talks, but walks. Trust not only what you see, but trust what is unseen. Now, that's, that's tough. <coughs> See, Solomon said, without vision, the people perish. So to deal with your stress and begin, as you build your relationship with the Godhead, you learn to trust not only what you see, but trust more so what you don't see. Okay. All right. Now, let's close out. Let's close out like this. You need to review your situation for a new view. In other words, review <laughs> so you have a new view. See, okay? If you, if you don't review, <laughs> you can't develop a new view. And, and, let, and let, let, me, let me give you a passage of Scripture. First of all, in Psalms chapter 4, verses, uh, Psalms, Psalms 46, you know, our same chapter. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, come. I, I always did like that when God says come or when Christ says come and follow me. I, I, I like that word come, come, come. You know, and, 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 and it seems like when, when, it, when it said class, come, it's done with a persuasive but not a dictatorial kind of situation. It's up to you now. You have, you're a free moral agent. Come, okay? He says come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. Just, 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 just come and see what the Lord has done, all right? <clears throat> now, let, 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 let me give you a, a New Testament, because I, I always like to run to the, uh, to, to the better covenant. See, the, see the, the New Testament is the better covenant. Let, let's, let's look at Philippians, 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 Philippians. Th th this is what a lot of these politicians need to, need to do, is, is deal with this lesson on stress. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 is the high calling. This is the high calling of Christ. Uh, he says uh, in verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Now, th this is, th Paul is doing the writing here, inspired by Christ, but he's writing. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, do what? what? What, Paul? What do you do? Forget those things which are behind. 
<clears throat> because that can cause you stress too. And reach forth unto those things which are before. Now watch verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And then he closed out in verse 15. Let us therefore as many as be perfect or mature be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. All right, now I'm going to close out. And I'm going to summarize with five little PowerPoints on how when stresses are larger than your strengths. <coughs> I'm going to give you five PowerPoints. You just jot these down, class. You ready? Number one, give yourself time to know K-N-O-W. That's an intimate relationship <coughs> to know the Godhead. Give yourself time to know the Godhead. That's number one. Number two, respond to what you know about the Godhead from the Bible. In other words, respond to it. Get to know the Godhead, then respond to it. All right. Number three. Number three. This is key. Number three. Review what the Godhead has done for you and those around you. <laughs> See, sometimes we need to look at what the Godhead has done for others because the Godhead may be doing the same thing for us and we just haven't even recognized it. Number four. Relate. Now watch, this, 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 is, this is key. This is key now. Relate the Godhead to your stress, your stresses. <coughs> Whatever your stresses are, relate the Godhead to that. And then number five, see the Godhead's peace reign in your heart. See that it reigns, R-E-I-G-N, in your heart or your mind. <coughs> see that his peace reigns in your mind. Got it? Got it? May God bless you. I love you so much. We'll look forward as we get back uh, on next lesson for lesson number 12, and that'll wrap up this series. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you being thankful again that you have allowed us uh, in this Bible class to deal with when our stresses are larger than our strengths and the importance of developing and, and uh, getting to know the Godhead <coughs> and having an intimate relationship with the Godhead. May we understand a little better Psalms 46, verses 1 through 11. And there are many other passages, but this one is an anchor passage that might be helpful to those who are students in this class. Forgive us for our sins. Help us to understand that God is a God that's always ready to help us whenever the need is there. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I'll see you in the next Bible class. May God bless you.